Is everybody doing good this morning? Good. Hey, speak back to me, please. I love when people speak back, so then I know you're, you're hearing, you're receiving the word, you're understanding the word. Amen? Amen. Okay. And if you don't seem awake to me, I'll just go into burpees, push-ups, and jumping jacks. You know, I got the background of fitness on me, and so I'm getting ready actually to jump back into rock solid. So uh, I'm excited about that. Yes. So if anybody wants to join me uh, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, I'm just going to put a, a little clip out there. Go ahead. Talk to me. I'm, in, I'm starting back up, so I'd love for you to come work out with me, too. I'm about uh, fitness in the spirit and in the natural. Amen. And I coach in the spirit and in the natural. So it just goes hand in hand with what I do. Okay, I believe right now that God is searching for those who will stay the course through difficulties, mountaintops, valleys, the desert, and the mundane. Loving him through it all, laying down your life and wanting nothing in return and paying the cost. So when I talk about, I'm going to do a little bit of teaching today. This is just, you guys, I'm very uh, visual. I don't, is there any visual people in here? Okay, good. I'm a visual person too. I'm an, actually also, I, I'm a graphic artist. Uh, social media is also in my background. So I'm a very artistic. So when I'm talking about mountaintops, oh no, bad pen. Sorry. Okay, here we go. Good pen. Yes, mountaintops. Okay, this is something that I believe most of us as believers have experienced. Who's experienced a mountaintop? Amen. Usually the mountaintop will happen when you first get saved. Oh, man. Who's been there? Yes. You're telling everybody about Jesus. Amen? And literally, every person on the corner from a fly to a dog to a cat to the person at, when you're getting gas at the grocery store, the mini mart, right? Wherever you're at, family, friends, even the family members that you least think would want to hear Jesus, you're telling them about Jesus, right? Okay. Now we're doing a little bit of walking. Um, I, I can't do, like, real art right now. You guys even, oh, wait. Oh, no, eraser. Okay, here we go. Okay, so now we start walking, right? Here's some walks. Here's some steps. Then we experience, we might start experience life. Comes in to the, to, the, to the walk. Busyness starts coming into the walk. What else starts coming in? Job starts coming into the walk. Family starts coming into the walk. Kids start coming into the walk. Maybe you're single and you first get saved, or maybe you're on just, you know, maybe a, just middle of the road and you get saved. I don't know. Wherever it is, you get saved. But then this starts happening, right? Life. Anybody experience life? And what happens when life starts coming in? Huh? Yep. Valleys. Valleys. And sometimes the desert, valley, desert. Can you guys, I know, I'm sorry, I'm uh, chicken scratch writing. My kids always talk about my scribbles. Okay, valley comes in, desert comes in. The day-to-day -day of life comes in, right? The day-to-day. -day. And what starts happening with the fire? Huh? It dies down, right? So you're in the mountaintop. You got the fire. Oh, that doesn't look like fire. Uh, this is like Pictionary. Did any of you guys play Pictionary? Okay, you got the fire, right, in these moments, in the mountaintops. And then this begins to set in right here into the life and into the journey. And then the valley sets in. That's where the testing comes in, Okay. Testing, trials, things we don't like to face. Us comes into the picture. Us, you know us, me and you. Me and you start coming into the picture. Okay, I'm going to read a scripture really quickly. But I believe right now God is wanting to have people that are consistent through the highs, the lows, and even through the valleys and the deserts and the mundane. He's looking for consistency. Come on. In this journey, you guys, I'm going to give you a little key right here. This walk is not a sprint. Young people, it's not a track race. We're not in a sprint. I don't know if anybody has heard this word. We're in an ultra marathon. 
And an ultra marathon, you're going to have valleys, deserts, the day-to-day, the mundane. You're going to have some mountaintops, which are going to fuel the fire. But also you're going to have to deal with life, busyness, jobs, families, kids, disappointments. Disappointments comes in this walk, you guys. Things happen to you that are not fair comes in this, in this walk. Grief happens in this walk. Death happens in this walk. Things that you don't understand happen in this walk. Divorce happens in this walk. Losing children happen in this walk. Maybe not physically, but maybe even naturally. They leave the house and you don't understand. There's things that happen in this walk that sometimes I'm going to tell you this, especially young ones that are here. You're not going to have answers sometimes from the Lord. But you're going to have to walk. You're going to have to keep walking. And sometimes it's going to feel boring. It's not going to feel good. It's not going to feel exciting. And the emojis that we have now through Facebook, you know how they give the little smiley faces? It's not always going to feel like that. But I want to talk to you about we're not walking this walk based on feeling. We're walking this walk through perseverance, consistency, allowing the Lord to deal with us, deal with our character. Ooh, character. Let me read a scripture, though, okay? So I make sure I bring the word into it so you guys don't be like, oh, she's one of those people that don't talk about Jesus and bring the word into it. Okay, let's go to Romans 5, 3 and 5. Love you, Judith. Okay, are we there? Yes? No? Everybody? Does everybody have their, their phone? You can also get the scripture through your phone. If there's some people here, maybe this is your first time to church. I'm just going to, you know, you can always grab the Bible app. It's a Bible app. Okay. Romans 5, 3 through 5. I'll just read it because it's not up yet. Okay. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope and hope does not put us to shame Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who's been given to us. So in this journey, God's about producing endurance in us. He's about producing character in us. And character will be your fruit. He says what? You will know people by their fruit. What is the fruit that we need to have moving, living on the inside of us. Let me tell you what the fruit is. This is in Galatians. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. That's us dealing with the flesh, guys. That flesh, right? And against such things, there is no law. So on this journey, we're going to have the mountaintops. And that's going to give us passion and zeal because as believers, we need the passion and we need the zeal. But that is not what has, that is not what you have to, uh, that is not what you can just consistently live on because that's not reality. Okay? We don't have conferences and hype preachers, and motivators around us 24-7, okay? You know what you're going to have to do? You're going to have to learn to walk, and walk steady, and steady walking is going to help you through the word. Prayer life, okay, you guys? I am up here because of a prayer life. Prayer helps me through all of this. It helps me through the mountain. It helps me through the basics of life. All of you guys are going to have to do life. I'm sorry. You cannot be locked up in a closet and not deal with the day-to-day. Your boss is going to get on your nerves. Kids, your parents at moments are probably going to irritate you, but you're going to irritate them too. 
okay? You're gonna have to learn to honor them through life. Honor. And through the honor, you're gonna have to learn to allow the Holy Spirit to help you produce the fruit. Fruit matters. We all look nice and pretty today. Thank you guys for all taking showers. I took a shower too. So my hair is so wet. Okay? You smell good. Brush your teeth. Put on some deodorant, hopefully some of you. Right? We look good. But when we go home, we got to do all this. All of this. Right? We got to allow the Holy Spirit to work on our hearts. Work on our hearts when we're at, at work. Come on. Does anybody have one of some of those bosses? Or do you everybody have amazing bosses? Huh? I was in the workplace just a little bit ago, and uh, it was a constant work of the Spirit for me. And the Lord was actually even working things out in me, you guys. Hello. God works and deals with me too, okay? But he's looking for those in this hour that will have the consistent fruit upon their lives, the ones that will work through and persevere through hard times, in the desert, in the valley, on the mountaintops, I'm just giving you keys today. And the key to consistency and walking through things is going to be prayer, accountability, vulnerability, coming to church consistently. You guys, don't just also rely on Sunday, but you got to walk this stuff out Monday through Saturday. You guys need to go back through the message sometimes. Don't let it just come through you on Sunday and then throw it out the window Monday through Saturday. Some of you need to re-listen to it so it's getting applied to your life. The word is is supposed to be activated. And in order to activate it, you got to apply it and allow the Lord to speak to you, deal with you. I know it doesn't feel good to get cut on, but we have to be cut on to produce fruit. And some of you have been so scared of the process and you don't allow the Lord to come into those areas because it's uncomfortable. But we want to be the body that is okay with being uncomfortable. We want to be broken vessels in this hour. We want to produce the fruit of Jesus because you are the example. Come on, at the school, wherever it is that you work, with your children, friends, campuses, wherever, they are looking to you, not me, not Pastor Preston, not these people here, not those people back there. I don't even know who's in your sphere of influence, but they're looking to you. They're watching your walk. And they need what you have. Don't be a closed closet Christian. But let's allow the Lord to do something with us in all these seasons of our life, right? And we want to be the ones that will produce and bear fruit. We want to be the ones that stay the course I'm telling you, things will come that will try to rear you. Watch as you're walking. Things will come that will try to get you off course. Go to the left or to the right. But you got to stay steady. And staying steady is through the word, through prayer. Getting involved with what's happening in in our church, you guys. Don't stay far. But draw close in this hour. Let God do something on the inside of you that he's never done before. And we are all face this stuff. We all get these moments in our life. But God is looking for ultra marathon people. This isn't a sprint again. This isn't a sprint. Amen? He's looking for those who will lay their lives down, who will love him with all their soul and all their might. Matthew 22 and 37, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. He's building character. He's working on attitude. He's working on consistency. He's teaching people how to walk by faith and not by sight. Amen? Okay, let's go to 1 Timothy 6, through, uh, 6 11 through 12. But you, man of God, flee from all these things. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance. Again, endurance, gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you are called when you're made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Endurance, you guys, is huge. It is key in this, in this journey as a believer. That is so key. You guys, it's not 
It's not a one and done. This walk, oh man, I don't know. It's not a one and done. Okay, one, no, that's not one and done. Sorry, one and done walk. Okay, also with you getting healing, deliverance coming, consistency is going to help with breaking chains. Sometimes it's not going to be a one and done at the altar. You need to keep coming back. You need to keep coming. That's the endurance part. And sometimes your flesh is going to tell you, don't show up. Don't come. It doesn't matter. Nothing is happening. That's the voice of the enemy. Let me just tell you and expose it right now. That's how the enemy works. You get on, you get on fire. You got all these mountaintop experiences. God's doing some radical stuff in you. People are getting changed. Family members are coming in, getting saved, right? This happens. I see this happen all the time. This happens. Then this happens in the valley, the deserts, the testing happen. And then we stop coming to church. We'll say, oh, we'll just come at Christmas. Oh, we'll come at Easter, right? Has that ever happened to any of you guys? Has that ever happened to anybody here? But God is wanting us to endure through it all, persevere through it all, stay in the game. Stay in the walk. Stay in the journey. Come on, I'm coaching you right now. Stay in because you are needed. You are needed. Your testimony is needed. What you've walked through is needed. People are dying to the left and to the right of you. There are souls that are around you in this moment that need to hear from you. From you sharing the gospel, not me. I have a testimony, but I don't have the people that you have around you. I don't have the family that you have around you. And they need to hear from you. This is also what happens at moments. 2 Corinthians 4, 8 through 18. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. We're always carrying around on our body the death of Jesus. So the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body for We who are alive are always being given over to the, oh, did I just read that? For sake, so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. So then death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. Come on, he's killing some things. Maybe some of you are in that time. Are you maybe in that moment where he's like walking you through and he's killing the flesh? He might be in that moment right now with you Mm. where there's some things that are dying. There's some things that are being cut on, cut on, cut. These are scissors, guys. Cut on. There might be some things that he's cutting away. (sighs) Thanks. Thanks, guys. I need to work on my picturing. I need to play the game. Okay, there's some scissors. He might be cutting on some things on you that you don't like right now. But I'm telling you, it's worth it. It's worth it. We are not going for an earthly prize or reward, but our reward is him. He is the eternal prize. This all here is temporary. Your guys' days are not promised, I'm sorry. I don't know your days in the earth, but when God begins to cut on you, it's not because he doesn't like you. It's because he's making you more into his image. And there's moments I don't like it either, people. It doesn't always feel good. I reach, I'm challenged. I'm disciplined. But what I've learned in this journey, I've learned with obedience and saying yes, there is, it is worth the cost. It is worth it. So those that are in here today, I just want to encourage you, stay the course, stay consistent, persevere. Let him produce endurance in you in this hour. Let him produce hope. Let him produce godly character in you. Let him produce love, patience, kindness, long-suffering. Let him produce Jesus on the inside of you. He is living and breathing. This isn't just another day, you guys. But come on, let the word be activated in your life. Spend time with him. Wait on him. Ask him, Lord, where is it that I'm even on my journey? Maybe some of you just don't even know. But God, I want you to be 
I want you to be produced in me. Amen? Is that making sense? Okay. He's building on the inside of you right now. Some of you might be under pressure, but in the pressure, I'm telling you, he's refining you. In the pressure, you're, be, you're gonna come out like, like a shining diamond. In the pressure, he's refining you. Come on, he's dealing with the attitude. He's dealing with your response system. Some of our response system is like a snapback. Is anybody like that? <laughs> and in the pressure and in the fire, he deals with that snapback, that lashing out, the quick to be angry. Come on, we gotta be slow to, or slow to listen or slow to, slow to speak, quick to listen, right? We need to, we need to make sure our hearts and our minds are set on him. I want to be set on you, Jesus. Come on, wherever you're at, through the mountaintops, through the valleys, through the desert, through the mundane, but I really believe in this hour, he's going across the earth and he's building people to be ultra marathoners. I think what happens is us as believers, when it gets hard and difficult, when we have to face hard and difficult things, we want to, we want to bounce out. We want to pull out quickly because we don't want to have to go through some things. But the process is necessary. Going through some things is good for you. I'm telling you, it's good for you. It might not always feel good, but it's good for you. It's going to build your legs. Can I just shift it to kind of like building you as an athlete? It's going to build muscle groups that you never thought you had. And it's the same in the spirit. So when you do face hardship, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, I know the Lord is with me. He's never going to leave me, nor he's going to forsake me. He's in the midst of the storm. Come on. He's in the midst of, of this whirlwind. He's in the midst of maybe what you're facing. You might get a doctor's report that might be hard, but you've walked through some things because you stayed the course. And even that doctor's report is not going to waver you to the left or to the right. Amen. And so he's producing a new muscle group in us in the spirit. I think also as Americans, we get so complacent and we can we just get used to just coming in and going out. We can become the consumers. But God is wanting to, to cut us away and not be the consumer in this hour. Come on, he was wanting to cut the fat away. Come on, he's wanting to build some things on the inside of you to not where you're just consuming, consuming, consuming. But he wants you to, to be one that he'll have endurance in the walk. You'll be the one that, like my father-in-law, he, he's been serving the Lord for a very long time. How long has it been? 70 years? Whoa, come on, somebody. That's the people, honestly, I look to. People that have been on this road and this journey. Because I know they fight different giants. And they've seen some battles in the spirit. And they've walked through some things. You guys, why my father-in-law is here, you guys, I'm telling you, cling from him. He's a treasure. He carries wisdom. You know, we've walked a long time, but there's something about having 70 years in the Christian walk and has not wavered. Come on, amen. Come on, he hasn't jumped ship and got back on, right? He changed his family tree. That's why my husband is standing here in this moment. He made a decision to follow Jesus through mountaintops, through the desert, through the valley, through the mundane, through the day-to-day, -day, through things that came his way because he has faced life, right? And we all got to face life in moments. But he has made the decision to stay consistent. Young ones, look to him. I'm telling you, allow the Lord to keep you. Stay the course. Even when you feel like things are going wrong, at home or whatever you're facing, maybe at school, I'm going to speak to you. Stay the course. It's worth it. Don't go to temptation. Come on, don't smoke weed or whatever temptation will try to come or the boyfriend or the girlfriend. Stay the course. He's worth it. I know it might not feel like it at times, but he is worth it. He's worth it. He died on the cross for you and I. He paid the ultimate price. And so there are things that God's going to do on the inside of you. He's going to do some things, but I'm telling you, he's worth it. And the journey might look really messy at times. I have one of those messy journeys, messy, but he's been faithful. He's been a constant friend, closer than any brother or sister. He's been a constant mother and father. 
Both my parents have passed away. He's been the constant. I was adopted uh, at three days old. You know, I dealt with abandonment and rejection. I didn't even know what that was until really I got saved. And I didn't know that was a root in me that kept me and put me in places I shouldn't have been. I didn't know some things that I know now, obviously. But I'm telling you, I have a messy story. But God has been constant. He's been faithful. He's been faithful and good through the good, the bad, the ugly. But I made the decision to stay consistent. I stayed the course. I came on Sunday sometimes, you guys. I didn't feel like it. I had a hard weekend. I had a hard week. We face hard stuff too. I had been sick in my body and not understood it. I got COVID really bad. I don't know why. I got long COVID. It took me almost two years to, to recover. Couldn't walk, couldn't talk, couldn't barely even crawl to the bathroom. I was a single mom and in a, a very dysfunctional childhood home. My mom had bipolar. I don't know if you know what that is. Some of you might not. There's things that I dealt with that I did not understand as a kid. There might be things that you are walking through in this moment, and it, and it could be just like this, messy. It looks messy, but God is producing things on the inside of you. But he's showing you, too, how much he deeply loves you. It's not out of works. It's not anything that you could create or do, but just out of your love for serving him. But I'm telling you, stay the course. It's worth it. It might be hard. You might face some hard rocks. You might face a mountain that feels at times impossible. But with God, all things are possible. With him, with you, walking with you, nothing is too hard. No doctor's report, no family situation, no blended family. You might come from a blended family and it might feel hard at times because you're with this parent, then you're with that parent, then you're at this school. I don't know. Whatever it is. No, God is with you and he is for you. He will never leave you. He is in your rear, your front, and your back. He is around you in every moment. Sorry. So I want to encourage you. If you're in a place and you've been on this journey for 30, 40 years, let him still keep cutting on you. Let him keep producing fruit on the inside of you. Let him keep producing righteousness godliness, faithfulness, gentleness. Come on, let him keep purifying you, keep you holy and set apart. You guys, that stuff never leaves. That's just not for moments in our walk. Let him keep producing the fruit of God on the inside of you. You want to be the one that produces and bears good fruit. Let him keep dealing with your heart and your posture. Keep coming to church on Sundays. Don't allow the enemy to keep you from here. You guys, this is a safe haven. This is a place for the sick. Did you guys know that? It's for the broken people. That's the word, right? That's the vision God gave us. Rescue, restore, and redeem. We're just a bunch of broken people that God wants to redeem for such a time as this. And restore us back to his heart. Restore us back to his original design that he put on the inside of you when you were being formed in your mother's womb. Your original seed. And some of you here, I know it might be hard. I'm first generation Christian. And even though I face hard things, I'm not doing this for myself. I'm doing this for future generations. It's about changing your family tree. So those in here that are just made decisions to follow Christ, and you feel hard moments, I want to encourage you. I'm losing my voice. <laughs> mm. I want to encourage you to stay the course. It's worth it. He's worth it. He is worthy of it all. Come on, like the song. Come on, he's worthy of it all. He's worthy of it all. He's worthy of it all. All honor and glory belong to you, O oh Lord, because he's worthy of it all. Yeah, and I got scars on my back that you don't see. 
I got some lashes that I've walked through, some things, but I want to encourage you, keep going, people of God. Keep going, sons and daughters, because you are seated at the table with the Most High, and you are surrounded by a heavenly host and a multitude that are cheering you on, saying, come on, Roderick, you can do it. Come on, Nicole, you can do it. Come on. That's what you have on the, on the, mm, that is surrounding you. There's angels, heavenly hosts that are warring on your behalf. Come on. But the most high has paid the ultimate price for you and I. Come on. Everything has been defeated at the cross. So whatever the enemy tries to throw on you, wherever you're at on this course, don't believe the lie of the enemy. Come on, take it captive, take every thought captive, break it, pull it down, and say no in Jesus' name. You are covered by the blood of the lamb. Amen? You are covered by his blood, and no harm shall come near you, and no weapon shall be formed against you. Come on, will you please stand with me?